Hi, my name is Alex. I'm with the University of California, Davis, and this is my project for Organic Chemistry 8A. The car I'm showing you today is 1985 300 CD. Now the CD means that it's a coupe model, and these are very rare. As you can see, the mileage is 318,403 miles. So it's had a long life, but it's still kicking. And right now it's running on vegetable oil. So even though it's old, it'll still run. In a diesel car, vegetable oils can be used as fuel. One can use a straight vegetable oil, waste vegetable oil, or biodiesel. Diesel is a mixture of vegetable oil or other energy cell carrying items such as lard and diesel. Straight vegetable oil is the type one might get straight from the store. Waste vegetable oil is becoming more popular, but many people don't know that the waste vegetable oil must be properly cured before use in, the, in an engine. It must be strained and for best results left to separate for the leftover particles or H2O. My topic for investigating vegetable oil is cysts and trans isomers. A popular theme in cysts and trans isomers is the effect of hydrogenation on certain fats, or in the case of oils, their fatty acids. Hydrogenation is a reaction that leads to the saturation of vegetable oils, which is widely known for its health effects. During hydrogenation, heat is added to the mixture, causing double bonds to break. When a double bond breaks, there is a possibility for the bond to rotate. The rotation is very important because it can cause a cis isomer, one with hydrogens on one side of the molecule, to transform into a trans isomer, one with hydrogens on opposite sides of the molecule. With little knowledge about cis trans and hydrogenation, I'll continue to describe how vegetable oil works in a car. When vegetable oil gets injected into an engine, it reacts like diesel fuel due to similarities in their properties. The pistons compact the fuel to about a 25 to 1 ratio and the vegetable oil combusts, thus causing the car to have motion. With hydrogenated oil, researchers have been able to find that hydrocarbons are similar to those of diesel. The difference between petroleum diesel and biodiesel or vegetable oil is the reduction of unburned hydrocarbons carbon monoxide and particulate matter in biodiesel, thus leading to better emissions. With waste vegetable oil, the oil is, has most likely been used in a fryer, which increases the heat and leads to hydrogenation. I thought that this would relate well to an example of a con converted car because the more hydrogenated, saturated oils that come from waste vegetable oil don't run as smoothly as strained vegetable oil. Another point about vegetable oil use is its effects in a colder climate. For use in an engine, the vegetable oil must go, th go through some series of heat in order to reach proper viscosity, or else the fuel injectors can be plugged up. The viscosity of vegetable oil is greater than that of diesel or gasoline. These heaters must be regulated, however, because the temperature is too high it will cause the vegetable oil to gel up. In addition to the greater viscosity is importance of cloud point induced by colder weather. The oil is still liquid at most lower temperatures, but suspended solids can clog parts of the engine, specifically fuel filters. This can cause the car to stop. The reason the cloud point exists is due to the fact that hydrogenated oil is a straight chain carbon. This is another example of how waste vegetable oil can be further assessed. Its high hydro hydrogenated content will cause great difficulty in the winter because as the degree of saturation increases, the oil's viscosity and melting point increase. One can predict the different oil's performance in coal oil by looking at its properties. For example, I'll examine the melting points of corn oil, 20 degrees Celsius, peanut oil, 3 degrees Celsius, and canola oil, negative 9.5 degrees Celsius. Looking at these numbers, one can expect corn oil to have the worst effects in cold weather and canola oil to have better effects. Now I actually work for uh, the company that converted this car to run vegetable oil. Our name is uh, Veggie Benz and we'll check out the engine right now.
with this conversion, you see those these orange uh, pieces we put in right here and right here our heaters so first the fuel comes in down here where the usual fuel line is it usually gets directed right from the fuel line into the engine what we do is we redirect it put it to a pump this is a biodiesel pump and it pumps it through the pipe heater right here this is the first heater that oil goes through and then it goes through a filter now this filter is a heavy duty Raycor marine filter and it centrifuges the fuel so that it separates the water and all the gunk and nasty uh, particles and materials that are in the fuel after it goes through the filter it continues on back into the engine where it then gets injected now for the injection we equally put heaters on each line so that will be equally distributed if it's not equally distributed then it can plug up one of the injectors uh, which would be no good for my vegetable oil demonstration I'm going to use a regular 48 ounce bottle of vegetable oil now this vegetable oil is your basic soybean oil and it's one of the most popular oils that's distributed today you take the vegetable oil and it's, and it's simple as this you take it you put it right in the gas tank and you let it go